Our sign with holes in the letters has been completed. Friends, I learned a few things and it's time to share them. So let's get cracking. Friends, if you missed the original tutorial, I will put a link up top. I'll also click right here so you can see what the project looked like. Originally, I had created HLMT for HL Mod Tech, but there are no holes in those letters. So a user said, what would I do with a nickname like Grumpy? So friends, I created this rendition. So let me show you how I set this up for 3D printing. Of course, step one is to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to take the whole thing and I'm going to do D to drop. I'm going to do shift nudge to move this piece out here. And I'm going to do D to drop. This entire part here printed all by itself. And we've got a ridge right here that this will set on. I ungrouped this. And these pieces right here were all printed separately. This right here is the exact same as this. But if we click on this one, you'll see how it says inner line and round. This one out here is the default fill. And that way it fills in perfectly. When I select those two, I can do control G to group. Now here is where I learned something. A user said that when they print theirs, these don't fit as well. I was able to force mine in, but that user was correct. It is snug. So here's how I chose to fix it. First, make this large. See how it's five? And then I'm going to push it down two so it's halfway through the work plane. Now we can select this shape and we can export it as an SVG. I'm going to name it Grumpy, and we're going to switch to a second program. The program we're going to use is called Inkscape. It is totally free. Step one is to choose File and Import, and we need to find that file. There is my Grumpy SVG. I'm going to open this SVG as a separate document, so that way it matches the right measurements. Now, this is something that shocks people a lot with Tinkercad. Nothing appears, but if you do Control-A, there is something to select. We need to switch to fill and stroke. If you don't see it there, you can always find it under the object menu for fill and stroke. And we want to go to stroke style. The problem is our stroke is 0.004. It's too small. If you do 0.1, this is the first part of our project is to get this outline. We do need to delete these inner pieces. Let me show you how easy that is. We're going to switch to nodes and click on the shape and then we can simply go from the right to the left and just grab the areas that we don't need. We only want the outside. Simply delete, delete, and delete these pieces. Now also, this is super complex. We can make this a lot easier in the system by just doing path simplify. Same shape much more simple and all we want to do is file save and then i'm also going to do file export we're doing this twice because we're going to use two of these so when we do export we want to pick a new name i'm going to change this to grumpy one i'm going to put it out in my downloads folder that way we can keep track of which is which and instead of inkscape svg i want to do a plain svg and simply hit save. So that one is complete. Now real quickly, let's bounce back to Tinkercad and I'm going to delete this one that we have right here and let's import our perfect one. There's my grumpy one. I want the art, I'm keeping the measurements and I'm choosing import. After a moment it appears, I am gonna bump up the quality and I'm going to set it to the thickness I would print for the back, which is 1 or maybe 0.5. But then since that user found that they don't fit, we need to trim it. I tried lots of tricks with inner line, outer line, and cutting with Tinkercad, and it left little pieces beside it, and it didn't cut these corners perfectly. We're going to solve this problem using Inkscape. We have got the exact same project, but now we're going to click on these lines. And under fill and stroke, I'm going to use 1.2, but I did find after using this that it's probably better to use 1 or 0.8. And press enter. That line is now thick, but if you send this as an SVG file, it will still come in paper thin. 
So with the thicker lines, we're going to export this once again, but we're going to call it Grumpy2. And we're going to keep playing SVG and export. Now we can't bring this right into Tinkercad. We've got to do one more trick so that the lines stay thick. The secret to do that is a website called SVG to STL. Simply Google it, visit it, select a file. Notice ours was called Grumpy2 and open it, upload it. It's going to have a height of five, which is absolutely fine. We'll adjust that as we need and convert it. After a moment, we get to see what it looks like. Notice you can turn it from every angle. I'm going to simply hit download. I'm going to save it in my downloads. It already has the correct name. And we simply need to return to Tinkercad, choose import, choose file. We want the grumpy SVG to STL. Open, keep the measurements, and import. It appears just like you'd expect. We're going to select them and do L for a line. And then if we make this a hole, you can see that it is trimming off all of those edges just like we wanted. This will make it so it slides in easier after 3D printing. Select them and do Control G to group. Bingo. The trimmed outline that is going to fit in here. Absolutely perfect. I will show you real quickly. If I do W for work plane, D for drop, we can bring that in place and you'll be able to see from the top. Let's do L for a line and just get it close to that perfect location so you can see how that's going to fit. Absolutely awesome. If you want it a little more tight, just use a smaller number than 1.2 in Inkscape. So let me show you the assembly. First, we've got these extra parts that we put in. Notice this one finishes the R. This one does the G. This will be the top part of the R. Over here is the P. And then I created this one right here to go in between the P. And I've also got a little piece that'll show up over here in a moment to split the R and the G. Now I used PLA. I used clear grip to get things to adhere. Let's quickly put these in place. I used a small X-Acto knife to clean up spots where the glue had spilled out further than I wanted. Bingo, our grumpy sign is created. So real quickly, this was the original one where I kept the size and I had to pound that down in there. This is the second one where we made it smaller and you can see how that would sit inside that area. Super simple. I really think if I were doing this again though, I would use one or 0.8 for that thickness because then it would be a little bit snug when it's set in here. There you go, now you've got options. Friends, I hope you had a ton of fun with this tutorial, learned a little bit about Inkscape and also found that awesome trick where you can make the thickness of an Inkscape SVG show up in Tinkercad. Of course, have a glorious day and keep tinkering. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to take a moment to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. I have got a page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you scroll down just a little further, you'll find my course, Tinkercad in 20 Days. You'll find it hosted on cadclass.org, and if you look at the very bottom, you will see a coupon code 25HLTinkercad. You can use that code to get 25% off any of the amazing courses they offer. Finally, you can click this link to get there immediately. I do also want to highlight the sweet built-in messaging tool. Friends, you can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. Of course, you can also click the link at the top for the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members, and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget to absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.